Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's hump day. It's my favorite day of the week because I get to hump. Anywho, on today's... Oh, not on today's. Where am I going? A little ahead of schedule here. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by none other, none other than Division Street Auto. Love me some Division Street Auto. Whatever you need for the vehicle, tune up, spark plugs, brake work, engine work, transmission shit, doesn't matter. They take care of it. I've been taking my cars to Division Street Auto for probably five years now. I don't think I'll ever take them anywhere else for as long as I am local to them uh, because I trust them. You know, I leave Division Street Auto. I know I'm not getting stiffed. I know I'm not getting work that I don't really need. They're just great people. They're located at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. You can give them a old jingle at 401-723-7080. Ask for George. I actually ask for anybody, but make sure you mention that you heard them on the J Squared Podcast, and they'll throw you the old 10% discount. You can use that savings to buy me something for Valentine's Day. Again, that's Division Street Auto. Check them out. This episode is also brought to you by... AJ Drywall and Plaster. Man, new house, uh, reconstruction, remodeling, uh, acoustic tiling. What do you call this stuff with the tile ceilings, drop ceilings, any kind of plaster needs that your home may need? You need to reach out to AJ Drywall. You can catch them on Facebook. You can catch them on Google. Just Google AJ Drywall and Plaster. You can also give them a call at 401-323-9252. The one thing you will notice about AJ Drywall and Plaster is their pricing is competitive, but more importantly, their customer service is grade A. They're going to make sure that you are taken care of and you're happy with everything. This episode is also brought to you by Tops Showroom and Gallery. Whatever your lighting needs may be, whether it's outdoor lighting, indoor lighting, you know those sparkly lights that make diamonds look good in the jewelry store? Those two. Uh, sconces, landscape lighting, LEDs, fluorescents, they got you covered. Chandeliers, go check out Top Showroom and Gallery 401 861 They're located at 120 Point Street in Providence. And if you don't have the time to go check them out, don't worry. Just give them a call. They do field visits. They'll come check you out. And that brings me right into my next sponsor, which is Onlyville Tire, because they have so much in common. Anyways, Onlyville Tire is located at 86 Plainville Street in Providence. You can give them a call at 401-421-1800. Third generation tire family. That's fucking amazing. I mean, how do you first get into the business of selling tires? And then how do you pass that down and stay open for damn near 100 years? They opened in 1923. Another four years, it's a hundred years in business, you know, and they're not a major franchise. They're local family owned little shop ran by Dory. She's fantastic. She'll take care of whatever you need, new tires, used tires, balances, rotation, and go check her out, man. They're, they're older than sliced bread. Um, you mentioned the J squared podcast. She's going to take care of you. She's going to give you a gift. I can't tell you what this week's gift is, but I guarantee that you'll like it. And last but not least, we are brought to you by Donkey Dodgers Poker Tour. Donkey Dodgers is a great place for anybody that is, you know, thinking that they might be interested in playing some poker. You know, maybe you've played a little online and you want to play live or you've seen it on TV and it looks cool. You've had family games and, you know, you'd like to play for some you know, actual money with some people. Um, you know, you can get into these games rather quickly cheaply for 20 anywhere between 20 and 30 dollars the nice thing about it is a very very friendly environment you know very welcoming to new players and uh, nothing but wholesome people that are going to be friendly and, and kind of help you get through the process and if you're just learning i couldn't think of a better place to go um but more than that you can win some serious money uh, they keep track of how many times you play and you can for just 20 bucks, you can get your way into what's called like a monthly championship. So you accumulate points based on how much you play and how well you do. And every month, you know, they give away 2000 bucks cash. And then their seasonal tournament, you could actually win a $10,000 seat into the main event. The main event at the World Series of Poker, which is the fucking Super Bowl of Poker. You know, you can get out there, win five, six, seven. I think, George, we're the winner this year, $8 million. 
Eight million dollars for first place. You can win your way into that tournament for twenty motherfucking dollars. How can you say no if you ever wanted to give poker a shot? Other than that, we got a great episode for you guys lined up today. We got none other than the J Squared Podcast's most loyal fan, our most charismatic fan, our most passionate fan who loves the podcast, Mr. Joe motherfucking Nolan himself. We're going to have a lot of fun for you guys. Hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks. That's all I got. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. Back to business, guys. What's up, Joe Nolan? What's happening? What Thanks up? For coming, bro. Thanks Jay. for coming. Thanks for having me. You look good. Jay. You've been losing some weight. You look Yeah, you do. Bit. You look yeah. good, man. Thanks. We could both take a, a lesson from you. Yeah. So what are you doing? You eating better? You exercising? No, Drinking. just not eating. I have a couple beers. Just not eating. Just not eating. Just not eat, not the not eating, eating diet? Yeah, oh, just... you're on that um Somali diet. Mm. <laughs> yeah, explain it. You're on that for three cents a day diet. <laughs> that Ethiopian fad <laughs> diet. That uh, you ever see those those memes where it's all those Ethiopian kids dancing, and it'll say like Hillary Clinton president shirts come in next week. Can't wait. <laughs> like, no, because <laughs> you know like Ram Super Bowl winners. Yeah, Ram Super Bowl winners. They print all those T-shirts ahead of time apparently, and I guess if they're not used, you know, they send them to third world countries. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> no, I'm you're saying starving. Like, yeah, you're walking around looking rit- ridiculous, but. You get, a shirt. Not no, you get a Hillary shirt or whatever, some flies <laughs> in your Hillary eyes. Shirt. And then if she wins too, you look like you knew the future. Some flies in your eyes. <laughs> like, you this said. shirt matches my flies. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know, Mr. Joe Nolan is a good friend of ours. Yes, he is. More than a good friend, he's probably our our most loyal listener, our biggest supporter. Always down for the cause, you know, just reaching out to us, letting us know what he thought about. Sorry guys, I got a burp. Each episode. Very much. Yeah, each episode. You know, things that he liked. You know, even things that he'd like to see on upcoming episodes. He's just super... um, Supportive. Yeah, supportive and engaged with us. So, we wanted to have him on. You know, he's a good buddy. Um, I'd say that the only other front runner who is equally as supportive as Joe is maybe Mike Otten. Mike Otten is all over it. I don't know. That guy, Mike Bolvin? The guy that comments on all the alcohol, he's pretty good, too. I'm sure he loves to hear that from you. Number one, number three fan. Mike I don't know his name. something. The number Maybe two Michael fan Bolton. is Michael, Michael Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into it, ladies and gents. Um, scouring the internet, just looking for some bullshit to to talk about. I saw some article about a mall in Holland that had a Michael Jackson statue, and for some reason, I don't really know why they removed it. We think about that, Jay. Why do you think they removed that statue? I have no idea, but I'm going to guess it has something to do with some kind of controversy with kids. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> so what do you, I mean, what are your thoughts about? Obviously, a, a lot of people feel that. I, I Some fans, I think, are so delusional that they don't think Michael Jackson is a pedophile. And they don't think anything was wrong with the way he acted with kids. But how do you feel about them removing that statue from the mall? You think it's the right move, the wrong move? Honestly, I you know... It, it, the guy's an icon. He's a global icon. So I don't care if he did whatever or is a, allegedly or whatever. Mm. He's a global icon. If they put, well, I mean, why they put it up in the first place? That's what you got to ask. If you're gonna just take it down, you know. So well, I mean, I, I think you, can, you put it up when he's a global icon and the biggest yeah. pop star in the world. You take it down when there's you know, controversy, an, egregi- an egregious amount of child molestation accusations against him. Yeah, but the man's dead. He can't defend himself now. He did a pretty good job when he was alive. Did they just take it down now? Yeah, there's yeah, 15 if... complaints, or 15 requests from college. Yeah, but they might have even put it up while 15? he had That's these it? Uh, controversies against him. You Does know? it say <clears throat> young Jorge when it went up? You know, like, because no. if it was erected... <laughs> <laughs> if it was no erected while he had tons of children at his playground... Then, yeah, it doesn't make Story sense. Whatever call his In his boxers. <laughs> right, like... <laughs> then, <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> How can you no, take it down got, now? So they just got uh, complaints from families with children. and See, Which is I understandable. A, That's super understandable to me because... But 15? 
I'm, I mean, that's, not that's really... 15 specifically requesting to have it removed. That that 15 doesn't necessarily have to be enough to make it make sense to remove it, but it could be enough people to put on the radar that, hey, this was a stupid-ass thing, and this should have been removed a long time ago. I don't know. I have a, Generally, I have a problem with any company or business that does something like that because of controversy. They're scared to take some kind of side. You know what I'm saying? Like... To put a statue up, that's pretty. That's a big thing. Like you know, you're really idolizing yeah, that somebody. To everybody, right? Well, what about all the and statues to, that got taken well, down well, down well, south? Well, and then to finish. take it down, you know, I don't want to say just because of 15 people, because that might not, like you said, that might. That's the only recorded right. Uh, complaints. And that could have just kind of brought something to light. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I just, I don't know. Like, why would you take a statue down of, of Michael Jackson? I, I don't even get it. But maybe it wouldn't be appropriate. Let's say if. You know, if he was accused of molesting kids, what do you think? (laughs) (laughs) Had me fucked up there for a minute. I'm like, I think that's what he did, man. (laughs) I mean, it's it's tough to say, but like you said, the statue's there. He's, you know, I mean, who knows what? Like, it takes a lot of effort to put it down. It could have, right? Exactly. It could have been put up at the time that he was accused of molesting people. Let's assume. Let's assume that it was put up before these accusations. But he's always no, been like, accused throughout. Well, the right. Hold on, I, w- I want to hear his, his point on this. If it's it's if we know that it was put up before he was ever accused of anything, and then you think they would have said something before now? I say just he's been dead for a few years. Just, just leave l- it up. Leave it up. Kind of like yeah. like, I, like I was saying, like kind of like the statues down south, the Civil War. Um, leave them up. Leave them up. You know, yeah. they're taking those down. It's like that's part of history. You know, it is part of history. So. You know, so I agree with that. Um, but just to stay on the michael jackson one for a minute i think you you hit the nail on the head it's businesses that but you said don't want to pick a side well i'm not necessarily pick a side let me let me finish you um that's what you said you know and and i'm not trying to tie you to that or anything but just uh you know almost like they want to just hey let's let's keep our hands clean of the situation i don't think that's the case i think they are picking a side i think they're picking the side that hey it's wrong and we want it removed not like let's pretend it never happened. I mean, what's the alternative? Keep the statue there, but deface it, and you know. Well, no, you down. know what? Maybe I'm ignorant to the newest information that has come out. You know, I guess against Michael Jackson. I mean, obviously, throughout his career, he's been accused of X, Y, and Z. And every time I've seen him do an interview on it or talk about it or whatever, I always walk away going, "I don't think he did that." So, but maybe there's something new that came out, like a doc. I don't know, that where like it's solidified. It's you know, no, no, <clears throat> this is absolutely not a TV station trying to sell a story. It's not Netflix and making a murderer. It's you know, it's this is concrete evidence. It's unbiased, and this is what it is. Um, and in that case, I guess if somebody's taking a side, where they're you know a business is taking a side and saying, hey, look, this is this guy's obviously a pedophile, like. We need to take this down. We're not. We're not idolizing pedophiles. Right, right, right. That I would agree with, but I have yet to. I have yet to one number look f- for that evidence and two see it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. So. Hmm. Interesting take. Um, so that <laughs> I was there. That pause. <laughs> what was that pause? I was just kind of taking in what you said and, and making sure I understood it correctly. I mean, that's. It's a good way to think about it. You know, obviously, if you aren't convinced that he's. A pedophile and these accusations are true then i would expect you to be a little more lenient on keeping the statue up right you know because exactly. you're, not, you're not sold on the fact that that's really he's, what happened yeah he's guilty of yeah, those you crimes didn't follow the court case, um, so. but i think that if you know for people that have followed the court case or what have you and the evidence to them just like a jury a jury is ultimately people mm. you know making a decision based on the case they have so if there are people that believe that he did it i could understand them wanting the statue down and they feel contrary to you you know they feel like hey we're celebrating a pedophile by leaving this up so i i, I kind of get that i think if i'm the business owner for some reason man i feel like michael jackson is still celebrated more than he is remembered as a pedophile 150 percent. so i I'd probably leave the statue up i think you know ultimately that that's i keep it up because i think you probably get for every 15 parents you get that say hey you should take this down because he was accused of being a pedophile you probably have a hundred people going to the statue and taking a picture with it mm. like hey this is michael jackson you know what i mean right that are just fans so uh, i feel that as far as the 
the ones down south, you know, these Confederate statues that y'all were just mentioning. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you guys earlier. I just, I wanted to transition yeah, into, I wanted right. to finish, wrap up Michael Jackson, um, like he should have with the, <laughs> anywho, um, with the Confederate so statues, sick. I think that's a little tougher because, I, and again, it's, neither of us are black, you know, and I think they have a really, really offensive history <gasps> and meaning Sorry. to people that are black and you know their ancestors endured the repercussions of that war you know like confederate flags may not mean anything to you or i to us it's just a piece of cloth it's a flag no big deal but we can't really feel how it feels to be black and live down south and feel what that flag represents to them but does it matter again i don't even feel like i should weigh in on that because i don't i don't know to me it, it may not matter well you know, put it this me, way it may not matter like like for example the fact that michael J jackson was accused of <coughs> molesting me. little kids and those parents believe that he did it to me that doesn't matter you know you got to base it on the facts but if as a parent i believed somebody molested my kid even though right. there wasn't enough evidence that'd be enough fact for me to make a decision okay you see what i'm uh, saying we'll put it this way you're i'm sorry what, what, what is your ancestry colombian and irish or English or a mix of white or something? Uh, yeah, just a mix of, you know, European. Okay. Are there things, would, uh, if there were things about our U.S. history that offended you, should we take those and erase them from our history? Can't say, man. There's nothing that's there. You know, it, 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 it's well, tough for I, me I to mean, speak. A, you've been offended before. That's yeah, what I'm I, saying. I don't like. I don't like having you know opinion up uh, um, opinions based on a very specific hypothetical situation when we have actual situations that we can talk about. All right, about. let's uh, let's let's take you out of the equation. Anybody. Well, let's if, let's if talk anybody's about offended. specific situation, you know, black people that live down south. So that, just because well, I hate cuz it makes it sound like I'm picking on black people just because they're the let, let's use any ancestry. If any ancestry is offended by American history, should we accommodate their feelings and and just start erasing our history i think that's bullshit i think there are too many variables i think you have to factor in why they're offended is there a reason for them to be offended you know are there is there offensive reaction just to what you know what the situation what events took place i mean ultimately yes for example if you know i went to my father's house or my father's family you know their home and there's a family portrait and he's in one of them and again this is totally hypothetical but if it if we found out that you know he beat the shit out of me when i was a kid and he really abused me and going there hurt me you know to see that picture and them still missing and loving him hurt me then i might be upset and i might say hey i don't want to look at this picture it really bothers me and if they decided to take that down i don't think that's the wrong thing to do what do you think, Joe? I'm not saying it should be. What's, what's your take? I, I can understand. I, it. I think they should. You know, I think they should stay there because, like you said, it's part of history. And if if what were they taking down like two years ago or so, or whatever it was. Yeah, if approximately. They, if they were, why now? Why not ten years ago? Why not fifteen years ago? You know what I mean? So did it all of a sudden offend people? Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Or maybe maybe it did, but I. I but there's I, a I factual answer to that as to why not then and why now, and that's just the access that we have to information and sharing information. You yeah, mean technology like Google I mean, exactly. and like people the researching internet. It's, the internet? You know, yeah. I just yeah. think it's it's statues of war heroes from from a war, you know, that's part of history. So I I I think they should stay. I think it's pretty it's pretty similar to imagine being a Jew in Germany and there are statues of Hitler or you know general um, generals and war heroes that were responsible for taking a race and trying to eradicate it you know but, because that was a military action so those are war heroes right. you got to remember if, this is america if you're a nazi so like this is we have freedom here and we have you know we're under different rules than let's say germany yeah but i don't think this is about black and white rules i think these things are happening based on you know like um like morality and, and ethics and there's a lot of feeling involved behind it which i don't think is necessarily a bad thing you know th these are emotional decisions that are being made it's not because you're allowed to or you're not allowed to I, you know i See, I can agree with you if there's a majority consensus in, in, in that town, then yeah, absolutely. Maybe not take down a statue, but I'm saying like, um, for instance, you know, for some people, let's say a lot of, let's say some straight people, uh, rainbow colored lights on a Capitol building like they do in Providence might offend people. I can understand people getting together and saying, hey, listen, we don't want that. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
so they stopped doing it. I mean, it's semi-similar. It's not the same as a historical statue. And I guess maybe that separates the two. Because some of these statues are not only... Not only do they represent something, but they're also historical. They actually are part of, um, again, American history. Unlike, let's say, the lights in the Capitol building. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I, maybe there's a fine line there. You know, how how much are you going to... How far are you going to go be, just because somebody's offended? Now... I guess the other part of that whole argument too though is do does the government need to cater to who they're offending or do people a society need to grow some skin like you know I, I get it you're offended but right be offended. A, you can be offended yeah you don't have a right to not be offended right you know what I'm saying so you think the statues should stay up is what I'm getting. I, oh yeah, the statue. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I right. think they should. Now, these lights. You're talking when you say the lights in the state house, the rainbow colored lights. Yeah. These are lights to obviously um, celebrate equality for the LBGTQZ. I'm not even sure if they actually do that. So, but that's what they're for. I'm not saying whether or not they do. Do they do that? Yes, they do. Oh, okay. You know, or or like a you know a pink light for breast cancer. That that right, situation. Right. So you refer to them. Do you think those lights should be taken down, or? They don't offend you, obviously. No. So it's all right. So it's no difference. But if you were offended, well, do you think actually, they should be able to be me, taken down? Let me let me reverse that. It's not that I'm offended. I don't think the government should be pushing uh, a, a specific sexual behavior I, in support. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think, think it has nothing to do with government. But see, I think that's. I don't think the government is pushing the sexual behavior. I think the government is celebrating the fact that the discrimination that once was there is moving towards not being there anymore. Well, when you say that, are you talking about legally or are you talking about just in society? Both. Because nothing in society has changed except for the le- legal part of it. The legal part of no, it society, being accepted. That, see, that's, that's completely wrong. No, and I, homosexuals I you, have been in, in our history since day one. What I'm saying is like the, the, the reaction to it and the social acceptance of it has definitely changed. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, there's I'm nothing, to, there's nothing to measure that. I'm there's, telling you 100% that it has because my perception and my acceptance of it personally has changed and i'm just one person well, i know but that you're just one person right but i can't be the only person but what would, would have changed what my, if those things opinion? brought up brought upon negative feelings and people that used to accept it no, no they do. never even were exposed to it how do you mean like what if you know what people used to let's say the capitol building people used to drive by it all the time let's say it's just not in their world it's not in their reality but now they drive by that all now it is Okay. And it's and it's in their reality because of the government. I don't think the government should have any part of that. Like you're not you're not. I think, I think the government does have to have. I hear an echo. I don't know if you guys. Hear I know it's echo. off the headphones. Oh. I think that the government definitely should have a say in. I'm trying to think of the right words to phrase this, but should have a say in whether or not a group of people is being discriminated against. I don't. I don't think the government shouldn't be allowed to say anything, like have a say in that. I think they have to. You know, I think it's important that they do. You know, the same reason that legally I would have a say if you know I have multiple children, and two of them are ostracizing another one. You know, or see, I agree with you. Uh, if you're talking about legally, if legally, you know, everybody deserves you know all the rights and et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're talking about, though. But no, we're actually talking about lights, and that has nothing to do with legal legality. Right, we're, we're mean, talking so about the government our, shouldn't be able to just raise awareness, and in a sense, because remember, every taxpayer is paying for those lights, and not everybody supports that. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I can understand what you're saying. Th- yeah, that's where I'm kind of going with. Not, I think I'm not saying legally, like they shouldn't have deep. a say at all. Yeah. But I think it's a little too deep, and I, I don't have any issue with them doing that. If you do that, I mean, you're you're entitled to that opinion. So I mean, I don't I don't have a, a necessarily. A, I wouldn't care if it was for something else. Let's say if it was for Christmas, I would say the same exact thing. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying you know, that you're I'd be like, singling, hey, look, that's... singling out gays or anything by any chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm... insinuating that at all. I'm just if you have an issue with the I'm lights, just saying that you are. You have the right to. <laughs> you have the right to have the issue with those lights, but but uh, going to to say that it's a, a it's you don't think anything has changed as far as society goes is crazy. Uh, I think because it's definitely I, I from what I see in myself and the people around me. And in the gay community and in the media, it's definitely more accepted, you know, from my life's perspective and other me- and mediums across well, the board. Let me ask you this. Is it more accepted from the people or is it just more advertised from the media? It's more accepted because I'm a person. 
Well, no, well, you I are. But, I mean, obviously, yeah, you're just one person. The, but that's, you know, that's scalable. You know, other people, there's 7 billion people in the world. So yep. I guarantee some of them have the same feelings that I have about well, you know, I know, but community. I'm, I'm trying to be objective here, so I know. But I'm just, you know, I'm just giving you're, you my my honest answer. Yeah, you know, I'm not. You might to have changed. Advocate. Your your acceptance might have changed, and I'm sure there's other people also. I'm agreeing with okay. you there, but there also there's other people that now they're now it's in their living room and they didn't want it there, and they turned the other way. So I mean, I think that scale is still the same. That's what I'm saying. Young Jorge, is there a way to look up acceptance? social acceptance of homosexuality in the states over time? So while he does that, what's, what do you, what's your take on this? What do you think? I mean, I feel as though, I mean, it is. You're right. It, it is more accepted nowadays. You know what I mean? But, Three um, fucking straight white dudes talking about gays and minorities. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> I love this. what the but no, fuck? But no, do I, we I know? feel as though it's more accepted. And you know, Jason's, you still have opinions. J- J- yeah, right. No, that's right. It's just uh, it's it's interesting though because you know the the, the opinions don't differ much and aren't from the most. Um, you don't have to suck dick to fucking have opinion <laughs> on it. Just dramatically is increased. Dramat- yeah, acceptance dramatically yeah. Right, increased. So, but so. That's all liberal-based media, though. <laughs> well, okay. dep- like you said, it depends where you're <laughs> from. Yeah, it's Kinda true. Like, Jay's like, look up Alex Jones. <laughs> right, right. Look up Alex Jones look and see right, what he thinks. Right, right-wing right answers. Like, tell me what David Duke thinks about <laughs> blacks. <laughs> so you want to you hear a crazy statistic, though? It says, uh, What's that? In Canada, basically, it's 80% of the people that say it's socially acceptable to be gay. And in the United States, the number sixty percent. So twenty percent difference between the United States. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, at see, all. that's that's got to be skewed. So you don't think the numbers have changed since no. ten years ago? No, I you, think it's. I think really. Yeah, huh. I, I, I don't think anybody was like, I hate it, and now I like it. Like but I don't I, like. I, I, I was, yeah, I, I was like that. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. like that. I was always accepting of gays, but. I mean, I feel as though... Man, you guys are pieces of shit. What do you mean? You guys used to hate it? No, I didn't. <laughs> I did. I'm just letting I mean, you know that you know my... He did, I didn't. I grew when yeah, I matured, no. you know? Like, I could still... But I feel like more people are accepting of gays now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think just think it's exactly the same. I don't think people are more accepting of it. I think it's just force-fed into into society. And, that, I mean, and then it forces oh, them to accept it. Well, hold on. Because it's in their face, is what you're saying. That well, no, no. I'm saying personally, I don't think anything has changed on the individual. That's what I think. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. As far as as a whole, as society and things, I think it's just more advertised. So therefore, it gives a perception that it is more accepted just because it's more advertised. Meaning, it is in your bedroom, right. and it, I mean, not your bedroom. <laughs> well, <laughs> it could be. It, could be. it is in your it's living right. room on your TV. Right. You know, there there are there are gay hosts now there where that never was acceptable, and you know the RuPaul drag show and that whole thing. And so, I mean, like, I mean, I sold uh, toys and novelties a few yeah. years ago, and. Um, I sold them at a gay gay pride at at uh, in Providence. Cool, like a uh, necklace dicks and stuff like that. There's all well, to all dicks, types of people. I mean, gay, gays and the, yeah, necklace dicks. There is dick a huge necklaces. market for people that want dicks around their necks. <laughs> right, I mean, <laughs> I, gay flags, feather boas, the whole nine. So yeah, no, and, but there were straight people there, you know. Like, but oh, that was also a festival, so I don't know how many people were more accepting, or if that was just the community at that point. I mean, it's the sort of acceptance like... acceptance level is probably much higher if you're at a gay pride festival than, <laughs> well, than the right. normal. Like, if you're walking around Walmart, I mean... Well, Walmart. They might be accepting, okay, but they're not celebrating it like they are at a festival. Right. Which is... Yeah. Sounds fun. I, I don't know how you would measure Walmart's. whether it's actually individual to individual if it's being more accepted or not. I, I don't know how you measure you that. you can measure that is with a survey. You know, you have to talk to people. Yeah, I guess so. You know? and, well, I just, and what's I'm, the acceptable amount of people, well, though? I can, you know? I can just go back to conversations that I've had, you know, when I was 10 years younger or 5 years younger. You know, if we had this conversation, the general consensus would probably not be as accepting as it is now. You know, there'd be more in the group that I'm communicating with that don't believe, you know, I like that term, you know, I don't believe in that lifestyle. You know, there'd be more people saying that than there are today. To where now, like, we realize, like, I think we're just getting more educated. I don't know. Across like, the we, board, you know, we're, we're, we're learning more, our brains. And do you mean in the U.S.? Or are you talking, like, because, like, I, I look at big pictures and I'm, I'm thinking, like, you know, homosexuality has been around forever. I'm talking global. Yeah. You know, like, so, I mean, like, it's always been there. Mm. Now, whether you really know that somebody accepts, I mean, that's a very private, internal thing. It's hard to measure that. How do you... I mean, like, the Romans, they were fucking everything, you know? They just, they were. I mean, they're fucking each other. They're fucking all kinds of shit. So, I mean, like, it's just kind of always, homosexuality has been around forever. Like, it, I don't think the numbers have changed. I don't think there's more homosexuals today than there was, 
you know. I yeah, think more people are open about it, like exactly. out of the closet. Well, oh yes, yeah, not a, yeah. Well, that's, see, that's, and that's a the result of it being accepted. Exactly. You know, so right. I think. Well, no, I think that's a result, result of the legality, mm. the Supreme no. Court, and that whole mm, thing that the gay marriage and. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm speaking out of just you know my own perspective and opinion. I mean, I just figure even if the I would say if you were to ask somebody you know that was not openly gay, they were you know gay and and hiding it. Yeah. Hey, what would you know um, motivate you to come out with your sexuality? Would it be legally you're having equal rights, or would it be it's socially accepted? I think they're more apt to choose socially accepted being the reason to come out. So then, why would you come out? How do you mean? <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I don't know. Sh- yeah, in general on that one. <laughs> but speaking of um, you know, all this all this gay talk and um, whether we accept or whether we don't, which we all do. You know, we have gay friends, friends, gay family, gay co-hosts, and but what about that dude that fucking? <laughs> he was he's fucking his wife and his dick snapped in half. What about it? <laughs> Shit, man, that's fucking that's crazy. So I was, you know, just Wait, kinda, when you say snapped in half, it didn't so fall on the floor. Like, so I'm just doing the, you know, doing the thing, skimming through Facebook, killing time, and every now and then I'll see some clickbaity article that I have to read. You know, like I'm like, all right, I don't want to just scroll past this one and say, ha, huh, I want to see what's going on. So apparently this dude is, you know, having sex with this girl. He's obviously, you know, hardcore brazer, like giving her that dick, dude. And apparently, he heard a crack, looked at his dick, said it swelled up and looked like a wine bottle, and that shit was scary. You know, so oh, to the man. ER, checked it out. So, Merlot my, or Cab? My, my question is, fuck, like, if you're fucking and you heard that happen to your dick, dude, like, what goes through your head? Like, when we get injured, you know, you hurt your arm, you hurt your wrist, you cut your hand. It's one thing, but. If you look down and saw that fuck, like my dick is in trouble. I can't afford to break mine in half. <laughs> I'd have a scab on my pelvis. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just that small. Uh, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like not getting it, dude. Could be, the, could be the weed. Could be the coat. I think it's coat the weed, 45. bro. You're, like, you're slipping exact. tonight. <laughs> nah, it's not the weed. I just, yeah, it was, a, it was a really. Weird. Lame joke. Like, not lame. Definitely not lame. Because once I understood it, I got it. But it, there were a few levels to that shit. Yeah. I, I had like to think. Way. First of all, why would it be a scab if it, you know, just snapped in half? Because I don't think it fell off. <laughs> like it wasn't chopped in half. Well, it that's snapped, what I was asking you. Like so this guy snapped more like a broken arm. So, so this guy's young, young Jorge, Give us the details on the injury. So he was having sex and then uh, he broke it. Obviously. The Too many pictures. Days, and the, there's actually a picture, but it's censored out. Is it scratch and sniff? It says. <laughs> It says that basically uh, swelled to the size of a wine bottle. <laughs> what? Oh my bottle? gosh! I just told you like that. This. You think I was lying when I said a wine bottle? I read the article. <laughs> oh, holy fuck! That dude. Are you serious? Like what that's what I'm fuck? saying. So imagine you look down and you see that something is seriously wrong with your your man meat. I'm gonna go in the bathroom and try to snap my shit to make it as big as a wine bottle. <laughs> I'm no, but in all seriousness, like I like what's going through your head? Like, like imagine not having the ability to have sex anymore. They, 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 you go to the hospital, they tell you, your dick's broke, you're done. Well, he's scared to uh, have kids now. He doesn't know if he's going to be able to have kids. Hold on. So wait, we got to go to the biology. How do you break a dick? <laughs> Fuck that. Who cares about how well, you not, break a dick? You didn't answer my question, bro. What? It, like, wh- how would you respond mentally if you... I, I'd prob- just like anything, I'd probably be in fucking pain and just... No, you know. if, forget the pain. The doctor telling you your dick is never going to work again. Sex is not happening no more. Uh, the only I question don't know, is, man. Like, nah, the God, only question is, how do you choose to go? I might do just you hang have to off myself. <laughs> like, what do you do? You'd probably be thinking that before pills? you thought about the pain. No, hey, listen. You know, honestly, I'd find a really good doctor and get a dick transplant. <laughs> but that's <laughs> not an option. Why is that not an option? I get a big fucking not black option, mamba, bro. Do you think? Do you think you would contemplate? Not living if your dick didn't work. Fuck no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into sex like that. Where I'm gonna fuck my life up. You know what I'm 100%. saying? Hundred percent. I agree. You agree? What? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm crazy. biting a bullet. I'm biting a bullet. Are you serious? If you can't have sex for the rest of your life, what's really? the point? 
There's so many things to enjoy in a life. Well, you can't sex. be married. Yeah, yeah you guys there are shallow as fuck. I mean, you, but... could, you could be married. You just have to be okay Hold with on. somebody else. After a certain age, you guys realize that your dick doesn't work, right? Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not at you that die. age. Then you die. Like, <laughs> that's right. what happens. Viagra, well, then you die. It happens like... He's at, like, like, I'm 39. It right. happened at 37. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when does that happen? Like 50? 37. <laughs> right, 37. 38? No, I'm serious. Like, <laughs> you tell us, you old 42. You got... What do you think, 50, 60? I don't know. It's probably no, different dude, for each person. There's old dudes still fucking, bro. I know, but they're taking pills and shit. Yeah, but not all of them. But yeah. I mean, it probably could happen oh, at 45 fine, or 85. If, if you can say naturally, wouldn't you Maybe think? 60. I don't know. I don't, I don't I think... George, search it. Yeah. George, look, up, look up old dicks. <laughs> <laughs> when the dick stop working, George? No, I bet look it has so much to dicks. do. Bet it has so much to do with your, you know, your health and your body and your diet and your exercise and your overall well-being, blood pressure, and shit like that. But it's inevitable, though. Like uh, after a while, you don't inevitable. start. You don't because it, it seems like first of all, it's treatable, and it seems like. Well, no, I'm saying naturally. Take the medicine out of it. Right. It seems like there's a your percentage. dick stops working. I don't know. I'm trying to explain what what I think happens from the ads that I hear. There's a percentage of men who eventually deal with erectile dysfunction. I don't know if it's inevitable that it happens to every man. I think it does. They sold two billion dollars worth of Viagra this year. Did you just look up some random stat. We didn't ask well, I mean, about. You told me to, you told me to look up. We want to. <laughs> the first thing up. We want to know when your dick dies. No, George, you don't have to when click images. Thirty-nine. When does the dick die? At what age does your penis naturally stop working? It's probably what you want to Google. Die. That's what I think. That's what I, I think. I don't think, don't think so. I think stop working. I mean, I don't know. It's I don't know. Just, I'm assuming there's some old ass dicks out, out there. Just, yeah, but there's a, a maybe five percent of dicks work till they die. But I feel like at some point right. it's probably it saying. probably changes. You know, some people their dick probably stops working at fifty. Other, other guys might be eighty, but most seventy year olds probably. Uh, 70 percent of 70 year olds hey let's put a poll up in the j squared podcast does page your does your dick work do you re- and post your age in the comments post your <laughs> for, for, for a graph <laughs> like we do, that. do you guys realize how high of a percentage um elderly that live in nursing homes that percentage of them contracting STDs while they're in nursing homes is crazy, crazy is, high, bro. All higher, they do is fuck. Is higher than uh, all they do is high fuck. Or colleges. Stop what it. About it's true. All they do is fuck. Dude. Old folks about, homes and what about that old folks home where there was a lady that she in was a, like a vegetable basically? Oh she yeah, had yeah, no, yeah. That was ridiculous. She was we like a vegetable. About yeah, that dude got arrested. One and two. She became pregnant. Yeah, that's fucked up. That dude was sick. So her chach was working, obviously. So you don't you don't contemplate suicide if you can never use your dick again. No chance of using no. your dick. I wouldn't even fucking like. Young Jorge, you do. Oh, I'm a bullet in a heartbeat. Joe? Oh, of like, course. No, I, mean, I, somebody, oh, wait. I mean, I definitely think about it. Right, cool. what the fuck? Same, same. I mean, have you guys really thought about what you're saying? Yes. Or like, you just like kind so of knee jerk? You're saying, telling me that somebody cuts I, I got to jerk my knee. I ain't doing jerking shit else. <laughs> it's like knee no, jerk. Yeah, my, my dick, like, put it this way. Like, you know, I was in the service. You were in the service. You get your dick blown off. You're just gonna off yourself. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that, bro. Well, I, mean, yeah. I put it this way. I guess you'd have to have your dick stop, get cut in half, and or blown off, and make the decision then. I mean, but if I had no limbs, I would limbs, definitely contemplate it. I would fucking kill myself. I'd rather have no limbs than not make. Hey, all if you had, if you had oh, your dick working right, oh, oh, so you, you might as well no do me limbs, in. But you had a working cock. Yeah, I, You're out? I'm done. I'm, I'm done. not done. I'm, I'm done. Just yeah. Fuck forever. Sorry, babe. Can't take it. Can't take out the trash. But you know what I can do. I could so here. Here and have you I think eventually if I didn't pelvic thrust <laughs> if I didn't have limbs, like if I got blown off, whatever, my dick was working, I'd learn how to walk on my dick. <laughs> I'd learn how to grab shit with it, like maybe play the piano. Maybe learn a new instrument. <laughs> maybe a keyboard. Don't give yourself too much credit, but I mean I'd be thinking about being a hairstylist. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about, I was thinking about being a, a dentist. <laughs> be a fucking proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> God, if you ask Michael Jackson, he's like definitely a pediatrician. <laughs> definitely a pediatrician. It's like, all right, this is a tongue depressor. Oh, oh my God, you sick bastard. Say, ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, my God. God. Just let me put the glove on. God, jeez. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. So, oh, moving on, we, we're very sorry if, you know, if you, anybody listening to this has cracked their dick and it's really an issue, we're sorry. Um, no, no. No hard feelings, man. Thoughts and prayers. Um, <laughs> Thoughts and prayers, man. <laughs> so another, Especially to the males. Another thing that I saw was an article of this fool winning the lottery. I think he was 
He won like north of a hundred mil, which is obviously life changing money for you could buy it. Anybody who doesn't have a hundred mil, and he collected his prize in a scream mask, you know, a scream full scream getup, so nobody could recognize him. Apparently, you can. George George is gonna have the info for us, but so hold on before you get into that, Jay. If you win the lot, obviously, I feel like we all have thought about this and fantasized about it, but. If you if you win the lottery, you know today's the day. Boom, you're 150 million dollars richer. Take us through your day. What do you do? Uh, like you initially, up. like oh, initially, you wake you wait, like you just checked. Boom, I'm a winner. Oh fuck! I, the first person I'd probably call is my mom. Okay. Um, things I would do, like I don't know what the succession of them or like the chronological order. Just keep but walk me through your day, baby. I'd <laughs> find I'd find the greatest lawyer out of there just to make sure that. My money can't be touched by Uncle Sam. So you got to find a Jew, first of all. Yeah. We're going right for the Jews. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, I want to protect that money, and then, you know, I'd start... I'd probably take a fucking long vacation with everybody I know, like... (laughs) So what do you think, in five, ten years? I would (laughs) fly fucking everybody everywhere. I I, I would take a big chunk and be like, all right, I am wiping my ass with this chunk of money just because I can. And then I'd look, you know, obviously going forward, look for investments. I'd always invest my money. I'd never sit on it. I'd never spend it. I would invest. I'd find ways that would, so the money would work for me as opposed to, you know, just dicking off with it or whatever. I definitely have a collection of spare dicks just in case I broke mine. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. So that's pretty, pretty standard shit. Nothing specific where you've always thought like, shit, man, if I'm rich, I need one of these. Nothing not need specific. one of these, but I'll tell you some things that I would do. I would go to fucking a really poor country, and I'd I'd, I'd probably get them, you know, water and all, all that. Right, other come shit. on, I'm talking. Be a little selfish with this answer. I mean, <laughs> people don't want to hear that shit. There's enough fucking. No, well, I'm, you know, I'm hey, being. You're asking me a question. I'm just giving. Night. I'm just giving you my my. <laughs> I, you know, right. I think that the common things are obvious. You would do those what? things like party, like fucking, you know, oh, something. Like go to buy. Vegas, go to Pretty fucking Ibiza, buy. buy. I mean, uh, fucking any. You, what can't you afford with a hundred mil? I don't know. You'd something that's two hundred mil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this house that just listed for one thirty-five. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, Joe. How about you? What are you doing? One hundred and thirty mil. First thing. I definitely get a lawyer and accountant. Then. Might, well, I might wait a couple weeks, so that way it's not all in the press, because I think some states they have to release your name, some they, some they don't. But um, once I get my money, as far as, like you were saying, as far as, like, donating or something like that, do, I'd rather not donate to, like, some big charity, because they're all going to be up your ass asking Right, you for, I'd do it myself. You know what I mean? I, well, not even, yeah, I would do it myself, but, like, I would I would like to do, like, a lot of small things. Like, you know what I mean? If you had a nice waitress, and it's not that I believe in Christmas, but Christmas time... Whatever, give her a hundred on a ten dollar breakfast. Hundred thirty million, right? <laughs> uh, on a ten dollar breakfast. Bro, most yeah. of, well, what most I'm saying, of us you do, do that, that now at Christmas. Most, time. most of you tip a hundred on a ten dollar piece of toast. On Christmas, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you got a hundred every time. Dollars, you're gonna. Yeah, but you $10 tip dollar breakfast. Yeah, well, if you, you can <laughs> do that so many more, you can do that so many more times. This is fantasy. This is fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Give her a hundred. Yeah, whatever. But um, but honestly, like, obviously, you guys know I like to gamble. I'd still gamble. Yeah, I'd, yeah. <laughs> I'd still gamble. Like I'd, I'd want to play poker. Like you know, I definitely buy into the, the nosebleeds, the, the ten, the, yeah. the ten thousand buy-in. I'd, it would be great to play the like the. Dude, you Alpha can actually 8s. get into that game for just twenty dollars if you hit yeah, up Dante yeah, Dodge's know. poker. But, but like I'd play those Alpha Eights, hundred thousand. Not a lot of them, but I'd play a hundred thousand dollar tournament, trying to be on TV, play with the pros. Like, and I'd love to just travel. You know, like I wouldn't even need about have a big house because I would just always want to be. You know on a cruise or in Europe or here or there or whatever. So it's kind Word. of what I would do. Just they live life, go on experiences. Word. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm probably in the same boat with a lot of that common shit, you know, just obviously we go find the Jew. Hey, protect the dough, you know, make sure nobody takes my ducks. Um, make sure you have enough set up to where you never have to work again. And your future lineage doesn't have to work anymore either. You know, everybody's just taken care of. The money is mm. just the, the Pilardi dynasty is, or, the Pilate Empire is we're good, you know, we're Rockefellers. Well, that's probably way more money, but that's a you know, lot we're, we're straight. We're um we're Mayweathers at this point. We're good. Um but I would definitely like to travel. You know, there's a lot of places that I can think of, of that I, I'd want to go. Um probably Monaco. I've always seen pictures and videos of that place. It looks super dope. Kind of like uh it's all like you know, like modern villas, but like on the ocean, but it's like cliffside, you know, it's not like beachfront. So that looks pretty tip. And I don't know, man. What about Chad? as far as investments? 
Like Jay said, what, what type of investments? Uh, probably a lot I of know, real prop- estate. A lot of lot, yeah, a lot of property. You know, like I definitely want to open a restaurant. And then uh, that's tough. Know if I'm in the food yeah, industry. Yeah, I know. But fuck the food dude, industry. That's you have a, thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Know, what's it? What's it cost for a failed restaurant? Like I don't know. So even if I put a mil out of a hundred mil, a hundred grand. Okay, if I lose four hundred grand on a restaurant, big deal. I had fun doing it, and I've always wanted to open a restaurant. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's your your fantasy. Right. I think I'd probably open up a cigar bar, that you know, like as a business, because um, that's just my thing. That's like my you know my my element. I'd mm. love to just hang around smoking cigars, having a drink, and socializing, just like we're doing now. Right. You know, but in a guy's place. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Why this guy? So this guy had a what a mask or something? What was the story? Oh yeah, that we were going back. To the story. Yeah, he claimed the lottery winning it was over a million dollars in a mask, so he wasn't. Bombarded by family. It was in Jamaica too, where they're really poor. Oh yeah, I you can know, see that. It was like that. a poor area, and it was a million dollars. So he put on a screen mask and collected the money. But it almost seems like if you're walking into, you know, a like lottery headquarters, casino, bank, like those all have a lot of money. You would think, uh, you know, What's you, that, the you, you would of think it? that wouldn't be a. Um, uh huh. <laughs> you would think that wouldn't be a place you'd be allowed to just walk in with a mask, you know? Oh, well, I, I thought you said screen. Scream. No, scream. Is that the, is that the picture mask. of him yeah, holding the check? Him, that's him collecting the money. Look at the check, though. Yeah. Does it say paid to the order of? Does it say his name? Yeah, it says. <laughs> <laughs> so he's sitting there. My man is sitting there in a full costume. He's like, nobody's going to recognize me. Meanwhile, his, his name's right there. His name is on the check. <laughs> he's holding up you know a that, big check. I mean, check. it's crazy, though, that that couldn't happen in Rhode Island, Mass. Certain different states, they make you claim with a name. Right. To but, put in the paper. Hmm. Huh. What do you think about the fact that he's walking into a place with millions of dollars with a mask on? You know what I mean? He yeah. could look like he's going to rob the place. That is true, man. That's true. I would probably just direct deposit that at that point. <laughs> well, know, nobody's going to rob a big, place if they're carrying a million dollars. Right, true. but they, they, don't know, they don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, he's just walking in off the street. Don't walk in with that. He's kind of looking super fucking weird. mask. I thought you said uh, a screen mask, like the black blacked out mask, like, like, a, like, like a, a bee, like, like a beehive like black face. Guy. Yeah, like yeah a, he went in with a fencing mask. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he walks in like on guard. <laughs> oh shit! So something else, dude, that Jay and I were talking about the other day. I, Jay brought it up, and I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was pretty funny that we were even able to talk about it because it's so silly. But fat mannequins, Mister O'Leary does not like fucking. Fat ass mannequins in these department well, no. stores. <laughs> it's not that I don't <laughs> like them. So they walked by these mannequins and started slapping drinks out of their hands. <laughs> you know, I've never seen one I don't know what it is. There's something that just irritates. I, that, that's an overstatement. I don't know what the right word is. Maybe bothers me a little bit. Fat uh, people, right? I don't know. No, not fat people. Dude. Fat. You know, because I'm big myself. <laughs> but I'm saying like, I just I don't know. It's on display, and and I think that that is what kind of gets to me a little like not and i know the business target doesn't have a response they're not responsible for the health of the united states you know so they're just like you said josh and that's a great point when we were talking about it is that they're just a business they're trying to sell their their retail i get it totally understand they They gotta do what they gotta do yeah they understand that a, a percentage of their buyers is people that are overweight and they're just marketing their shit to capture that money and which is crazy because i've always thought personally that if retailers, especially clothing, if they want to stay in business, they need to make their sizes bigger to cater to the ob- obesity problem in America, right? But for whatever reason, advertising it, you know, on a mannequin, when you just see this f- f- fat mannequin, it's just like, <laughs> God, like, is that where America's at? Yeah, like, well, that, first of all, that is where America's at. I guess but, so. But here's the thing. Do you, you, don't, you don't like the fat mannequin is what you're saying. He but, hates the fat. No, there's just something thing, about it. If it's they just like sell, you can if sense, they sell fat clothes, you can clothes. sense the fucking disdain in his tone. Yes, if they sell fat clothes, you don't want to put mannequins. them on a skinny mannequin. It's, there's just you're right, I mean, and there's just that's something. That's not gonna look right. There's something about the the advertisement of it. It's almost like, and I think I said use this word. It's almost like you know, instead of solving a problem in America, now we're promoting and revering it in a weird way. And I, and I know that's not what their intention is. I know it's that's not. Yeah, it is. It's kind of a reach, you right. know. But it's well. just, see, it's so weird. Just a, Maybe it's just change that I have, you know, like, are you serious? Like, like would you agree that there are certain, certain kinds of mannequins? Now, think about this, like, really fast. <laughs> certain kind of mannequins yeah. that wouldn't, uh, 
if you saw them, and I get it, they're just trying to sell. Like you'd be like, man, that's I don't know, that's on the line. You know, Certain kinds of mannequins. I mean, or no, is it all acceptable? I think it's all acceptable, and it also has to do with like what. First of all, what they're selling. If they're selling the clothes that fit the mannequin, then sure. And here's the other thing: I don't know what type of store if it, it was in, how fat the mannequin was. Like if it was, it was Target. If it was a store, the well, well, here's was? the thing: if it was a store that sold anywhere from really skinny to really fat people's clothes, and it was just a fat mannequin, I'd be like, yeah, it's kind of fucked. But if it was a store like Big and Tall, and it had a guy one of our sizes, but even Big and Tall mannequins were they, they are bigger, but they were never fatter. fatter. Like, yeah, so the suit look oversized. I don't remember all these. So I'm like, wow, that shirt would look great on me if I was six ten and jacked. And <laughs> right, if I, if I was 6'10", 120 pounds, like because he, Jay wants all hold mannequins on. to be skinny. Well, you hold on. Something that you just said, Jay. <laughs> I don't want all mannequins well, to be skinny. It seems like it's fat shaming statues <laughs> <I> now. <laughs> So just to, just to touch base on what you said, Joe, um, you had said if it's a big and tall store, you're okay with it. But if it's a store that sells small, anywhere up to big sizes, no, I'm you not saying I'm not okay. You don't with think it. they should have a mannequin? No, they can they can have a fat mannequin, but fat mannequin. <laughs> what I'm saying is, <laughs> what would you call it? Uh, chubby? Oh yeah, you call it a fat mannequin. But yeah. they can have a fat mannequin, but it would just don't be read my odd. Notes. Oh sorry, uh, <laughs> no. it would just be it would just be odd don't if, my fat if notes. like they took out if if they had small to big, you know, really small to really big clothes, and they had like. Re- average size mannequins and then they just took those out and put fat mannequins in it wouldn't be bad if they had fat mannequins skinny mannequins and here's the other thing if they switched it from a skinny mannequin which used to be the average size to a not fat but a thick a thick aka average CC? average mannequin then they're just following up the times target yeah i don't know yeah i think there's have you have you, have you seen them I saw something on Facebook and he didn't. It was a guy mannequin with like, it was like a dad. Oh, yeah, it was like a dad. Yeah, it was yeah, like a dad. See, dad bods, I don't have a problem with. I don't How fat are you talking that you don't like? Like, these do you want them obese, obese mannequins? mannequins? Dude, they are yeah. not what type obese of store was mannequins. You have to see them. Show, can we bring up a picture? picture. Of the obese, I do. I do have a picture. I have a picture. If I accept that in the store or not? The picture doesn't do it justice, though. You have to see them. Have you seen one live? Yeah, it's in Target. The picture the Target does here? do it justice. Yeah, it's a Target's right a store that sells everything. Do they, do they have skinny mannequins too? Of course. The picture doesn't. So you justice. don't want you want the skinny mannequins and not the fat mannequins. The, the, the thing I is, don't know. People, people should be healthy, and maybe like not everybody should be fat, but from afar it doesn't look that um, bad. But I'm telling you, when you're standing I mean, there, it's not. It, it's big, that's but it's a not very huge. No. Common is it huge? size for right. a woman. That's no, 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 no. You got You got to be that's, there. I'm that's telling comparative you. to the dad bod mannequin no. almost. I'm telling you. Listen, that's why I took a picture of it. If it was like you nor- took that picture, yeah. Well, you should have. If it was, was take a picture was, with it, so you get to <laughs> sh- yes. Right. You're right. I should so get to see. Damn, they're, they're if you saw like the normal mannequin next to, so like the bottom of the of the ankles actually went out like the pants went like out into this large body like Here, it, I, I don't, I don't remember it's weird did the clothes fit the mannequin nicely like did if they did then it's I don't know it looked like a bunch of f- f- fat <laughs> mannequin like I don't know <laughs> That's the dad. Yeah, that one. Nah, that's, that's, that shirt's that's, too tight, that's though. But even, it's that's that's a pretty fat man. Like I'd it look is. at that shirt and be like, "Hey, that'll look so good on me." Those right, mannequins fat, are right. bigger than that. Yeah, but they're not that much off, honestly. Right. No, but I think the, the concept is the same. Well, you know, we'll ultimately, ultimately, what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter how you know tiny or huge the person is or the mannequin is, if the store is trying to sell that type of clothing to a fat person, you should advertise it on a fat mannequin. And before we move on from this, though, I, I want to know. I mean, if you feel this way about just fat mannequins, yeah. how do you feel about gay mannequins? I've never seen gay mannequins. What about a what? black mannequin? Oh, yeah. First of all, mannequins can't be gay. How? <laughs> well, they whoa. could be. Whoa. No, they, no, they can't. They're that's, not. They can be gay. That's, no. That's pretty. Mannequins cannot be gay. Of you. How can well, you say they can a man- be portrayed as? <laughs> I, I actually think you're right, though. They can what? be gay. No, they can't. won't have a hey, sexual I was preference. Right. About no, I'm serious. Show. They're inanimate. They, inanimate like, yeah, but I mean, here I'm some out. some gay people have a certain way they dress. So if you dressed a, 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 a flamboyant mannequin a, Hold on. in a flamboyant outfit, can that mannequin Yeah, but not an be outfit gay? doesn't make you gay. I uh, know, but it's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but you walk, around with, hey, you walk around with some assless chaps and a gag oh, in your mouth. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to be gay, you're too. Catching, bro. You're no, catching. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah think catching. about what you're saying. You're saying that clothes make people gay? No, what I'm mm. saying is... Is that what you're saying? No, no, no I'm no, saying there's probably... There's probably a... What is looking gay? I'm going to explain what does that it mean? to you right now. You have a mirror? Like, what does that mean, George? All you got to do is listen. If you're... You can definitely talk explain about... this. Hold on. You can definitely talk about a type of clothing 
that is normally and probably more openly worn in the gay community. Like what? Assless chaps. <laughs> no, cowboys wear assless chaps. There's a lot more. <laughs> tank tops. Everybody wears tank tops. There's not a lot of cowboys wearing assless chaps around. Let's take a poll right now. What are you talking Who's about? Going? That's exactly what they're used right, for. Let's just take a poll. You know, let's see what the people think. Comment on this, guys, this video, whatever you think. What's more? Who's more likely to wear assless chaps today? First of all, hold on. Can we, cl cl can we clarify? Stop, bro. Let Wait, hold on. I know, the, but no, no, no. don't interrupt me. Let's and tell clarify me that all, um, hold on. all don't chaps are assless. Don't, don't you don't have to me. say assless. <laughs> don't interrupt me. I feel like you do have to say it, but you might be so right. The polling question, you're the polling skewing question the... is, I'm not skewing anything. The polling question is, chaps. who is more likely to wear assless chaps? To the, all right, so chaps, and if you don't know what chaps are, they're pants with no ass in them. So, who's more likely to wear them? Cowboys or Indians? No. Or gay people? No, cowboys <laughs> All right. I think it's... What? I you think the answer is gay people? I think, I think that would be the answer. No. But I think that'd the be thing. the answer. Hey, listen. Cow you go down to Provincetown... You don't see anybody. That's a whole gay community. You don't see people wearing assless <laughs> chaps. Both. They're yeah, but, hey, they're on assless chaps with like a toy horse broom. If you go to Texas in a fucking <laughs> rodeo, wear assless chaps over their jeans. Jeans. Yeah. So it's gay people but, don't know. Yeah, but so. I can't use that argument because I said the the clothing, not how they wear it. Right, but we wouldn't put jeans and then the assless chaps but, on let, the mannequin, which on. is what we we're originally but, talking about. What do you about. mean by we? What do you mean we? Let's go back to the original. Us. Let's go back to the original argument, though, or not argument, but talking point that. Clothes can cannot gay? make somebody gay. No, they're not going to make somebody gay, but you can look at <laughs> It's like somebody who's got a fairy like dust on it. That's it's like a really faggish so, stance. So with that, with that logic, can you say... There. How dare you drop the F-bomb? <laughs> <laughs> like, with a faggish stance. Yeah, <laughs> right? You can say that. Yeah, that's an bro. antiquated derogatory you, slur. No, you're right. There's not yeah. a faggish stance, but... I don't know. <laughs> but I, know I know what you mean. It's in the context. I know what you mean. All right, yeah. So can can people wear clothes that make them look at black? Jake calling him a fag. No, there's absolutely. Not, I yes, mean, dude. Yes. Like, look at this reason. Oh man. my look gosh, at reason, you guys are fucked that, up. All right. So, well, Jay is being very specific on the way he wor he words it, which I understand. To what you're saying, no. I'm trying to prove a point here. No, putting on a certain type of clothes doesn't make isn't you going look black. to make me black. Right. It's not going to change yeah. the way that your skin tone is, and it's more than likely not going to change your sexual preference. And I think the point that Joe is trying to make is if you look at the most of a specific type of clothing, there's probably a demographic that buys that type of clothing more than another demographic. Like, like what? Pink, Give pink, an example. Pink skinny jeans on a, on a boy mannequin. With a lime green shirt and oh, his hair flipped over. Right like now in Target. So you, well, you specific. asked. You, you, that, that wouldn't look more gay to you? No, because they have them right now at Target. Right. On and a straight, straight dude, that's like. Well, I guess straight people. Are and it looks right, perfectly so fine. If you see a mannequin, I, I'm, I thought that would be a gay thing to do. Is where and, and, and you're right. And I, I, and I, I think shirt. I understand what you're saying. Pink but jeans, I think... skinny jeans, pink skinny jeans, and a lime uh -huh. green tight, tight, tight shirt. I mean, I think so more specific. people, who, more people who wear that outfit would. Probably, probably be gay as opposed to the straight the amount of straight people that would wear that same outfit. Oh, wow, that is That's very very stereotypical. Yeah. No, no, I can be Joe, stereotypical. Hear me out. What you're doing right now is you're portraying an idea, but I think that the words that are coming out don't necessarily paint the correct picture. And Jay's taking it very out literally out context, right? because he doesn't have faith that you can explain what you're trying to well, say without saying gay well, clothes. It, no, hold on. It's sort of like this. So, yeah. like a male who wears an ankle bracelet, would you say that that's gay? Yes. But the uh, ankle bracelet itself is not gay, right? right? Yeah, no, I don't I even know if that's gay. I mean, but I don't hold on. Think that's I'm trying either. to. You, could be you gay. don't think like, that I'm that's on gay? The fence on that one. A man wearing a okay, ankle bracelet? Uh, jewelry? No, I, a, I think a male wearing, wearing a toe ring. I think wearing jewelry at all as a man is pretty feminine, whether it's a ring, a bracelet. You know, I think the only, like, and this is a very ignorant and stupid opinion of mine, but I feel like the only yes. jewelry a man should wear is a watch. You know, that's what about a wedding ring? Please. Well, and please. Oh. <laughs> hey, how about so like back when I was younger, wearing one earring in your left ear? Said you were gay, right? Definitely no, that was oh, that right was the was style. No, that was the style. If you wore it in the right ear, that that means yeah. that you were homosexual, whatever, blah blah blah. Now today, it doesn't even matter. I don't think it matters. You know, just what it's you not even a thing. Put it in the wrong ear. Now I, I, I guess my now, point if is, you is just that you wear one earring, you're a tool now. Right. And if you wear two earrings, 
Like, bro, give it up. It's not. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, clothes or jewelry or whatever doesn't doesn't define somebody. No, I understand. And that nobody disagrees with you. Yeah, okay. Nobody disagrees. You can't. You're right. You can't have a gay mannequin. Right. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) You're right. Full circle. You win. You're right. You can't have a gay mannequin. But I feel as though. But you can. can You can dress 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 another mannequin. Grab it by the. (laughs) Right. No, but you you can dress a mannequin. Yeah, in a way that's typically associated with gay fashion. Right. You know, and if what's you're gay fashion? If like, you're, I mean, pink, we can pink, we can play the devil's images. advocate game all day. I, we're not going to no, get into it. You're saying it. I want to know what gay fashion is. <laughs> well, you can check that out on your own time. We don't have time what, to get what into it. What are you this. talking about? I mean, it's just you know, it's that's like saying a gay hairstyle. Like, give me a gay hair hairstyle. Take off your hat, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Please take off your hat, sir. <laughs> no, I, I'm being serious. Like, explain. I am not joking in any sense of the word. Come joke. on, stop. Please it. take off your. hat. I'm being like dead serious. What? What is it? I don't is, know how to be. What is more gay serious. clothes? Like what is humans, gay, gay hair visual. If I try to explain a gay hairstyle, people aren't gonna. I'm not gonna articulate it the way that it should be, and people won't understand. Kind of like if I you did. just remove your hat, it would help stop matters it. so much. <laughs> All right. So, anywho, can there be gay mannequins? Who knows? Can you dress a little flamboyant? Maybe two different things. Are they? Um, I mean, if you're wearing a leash, <laughs> that might not it's be like gay. If, if you're wearing a strap-on yeah. dildo, so like inside out, BDSM, right. what do they call that? You B- might be gay. BDSM. You ever try anything like that? Um, no, you know, like I'll, you ever, I'll, whip, whip I'll, I'll give you a story. Like, tie her up, handcuffs, really fast. So like a, a fast story. Just to make a long story short. I'm down in Texas when I was in the service. I'm in a BYOB strip joint. One of the dancers brings me downstairs. I don't know what. what Shout out to Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, <laughs> One of the dancers brings me downstairs into like this dungeon thing. She asked me to take off my shirt. I'm wearing fucking like clothespins on my nipples. Mm. <laughs> I get handcuffed to a wall, and that's you know whatever. But oh, does no, 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 that no. classify as BDSM stuff? I don't know. Can I, I mean, what happened? Ab- did you, you're obviously no longer handcuffed to the wall. So what happened after that? You were handcuffed to the wall, and then <laughs> and then what, sir? And then what? Like that's a weird time to just. Yada yada yada. Well, no, I'm saying as far as BDSM, what what is that anyway? I don't even know what that is. Does that classify as as that? I don't know. What is BDSM? Nothing else happened as far as like weird shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't. She didn't whip you or anything. No, no, I didn't put no fucking ball gag in my mouth. Let's all and damn, you know, like this is pretty embarrassing. We're a bunch of grown men that have had sex, and I like to think that I can. Well, well, with other people, right? Well, I like to think that I can pleasure my girl. I feel like I should know enough about sex to understand BDSM, but when I look at it, I I look at it as like. Bondage. Oh yeah, bondage, gagging. Bondage, discipline, dominance, and submission. Ooh, that's sexy. It's so, ooh. Bond, so bondage is something that can get a little, you know, you give your girl handcuffs or tied Whips to the bedpost chain. or something like that. Whips and chains, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. That's a little too much for me. What's the other one? Submission. Well, you do that already with your girl. Yeah, right? yeah, I do that, dude. My fucking knee still hurts, actually. <laughs> nah, but submit. Yeah, submission. I make her tap out. <laughs> Put her in a triangle show that was like, uh, with my dick. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I can't believe I Googled Your it. Funny thing is he Your search history must be all over the, the place. The funny thing is he Dude. didn't Google it. He's just like, oh, bondage, discipline, <laughs> right, right. submission. What was the last one? Uh, submission. Dominance, um, discipline, bondage. Well, I mean dominance. I think it, like it, we're men, but like every now and then it's nice to have the girl be a little dominant, you know? Well, and you girl, can just... you, I mean, your girl's got two out of four already, right? You just gotta get bonded. Exactly. No, no, no. I definitely, you know, she fucking ties my ankles right next to my ears. <laughs> we go from oh, there. Oh, bro, come on, man. <laughs> we we just there. ate. Come on, <laughs> seriously. I don't. There. I really don't want. Oh, man. Bro, honestly, dude, if my ankles could even get that high, I would just love to stretch. <laughs> Anywho. Um, so, lastly, but not leastly, I shouldn't even say that. Who the fuck knows if it's last? And resume. So, next up, dude, we were talking about. Uh, so hey, you know, like I'm edit that uh, you have to. You, you know what that means. Um, we brought something up, dude, the other night, and I, Jay and I tend to get pretty baked, and then have these fucking interesting conversations. And I, I forgot how it came up, but we were talking about sleep paralysis, and I don't know if anybody else deals with that, but do you guys. It, what do you mean by sleep paralysis? All right, so what, if you don't know about it, then you yeah, probably don't. Right. So let me, let me explain it. If, if you're listening and you... Worse, disorders. Yeah, if, you, if you're listening and you don't know what it is or you've never heard of it, um, George, you can probably help us out with like the, the technical definition, but ultimately what happens is what you experience is your brain is awake and you know that you're dreaming, but your senses, as in your hearing and your eyes, 
are awake. So you can't move your body. Your body is completely asleep. immobile and asleep, but your yeah, brain but and your senses are awake. So the, the difference that he's talking about is that basically you're unable to move. Right. And then you're actually conscious during the dream. So you can actually, Correct. if you're if you're involved in something, you can f you can like see it happening, but you can't feel it happening. Sounds like reverse sleepwalking almost. S sketchy, either way. Yeah, right. maybe. of course. Yeah, I mean, no, I suffer from it. Ambient, I, or I don't even know if that's the right word. I'm victimizing myself. I, I, well, no, it happens to me or whatever. It yeah, I would say you suffer from it because there's a lot of people that have never experienced this in their life, and what I think is interesting. Is there's a documentary on it on Netflix? I think it's called Nightmare, maybe. Um, but like it's, it's called basically, Sleep Paralysis. It's basically a a documentary of people recounting the one time that the most horrific, traumatizing sleep experience they've ever had in their life, and it's you know the the name of the show is called The Nightmare, and it's just again counts of these people talking about one specific time that they still remember 20 to 30 years later that it was that traumati traumatizing for them but it's something that a lot of us deal with regularly yeah like weekly um every two days every three days it happens to me but it's it's incredible that something that traumatizing to somebody that even when you're that scared of it happening it can happen to you enough times to where you just get used to it and learn how to cope and learn how to deal with it. I think that's where I'm at. Like, Same. when it does happen to me, like, I don't get freaked out anymore at all. I just realize that I'm sleeping, and I try to do something. We talked about this. I try to right. do something to wake myself up. So, like, it's like my eyes are closed. My brain is awake. My body's asleep. I know that whatever I'm dreaming, that it's happening, right? So and then I try to move and it's like almost impossible to move. It's like I've never heard but I keep honestly. struggling and struggling up until a point where I move something. Like or like sometimes I try to yell. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like you know, and like even my girl she'll say she'll like, you know, you're like moaning in your sleep or something mm -hmm. like that and, and that's me trying to wake myself up. Like even in in my dream, I'm I'm yeah, I'm trying and yelling really mm. hard but on the outside it's just probably coming out like uh, no, do you remember uh, all these nothing dreams? at like all. Most dreams you don't remember, or nothing at all, or yeah. Like most I dreams do. you don't remember for all. You remember these ones? Oh yeah. I, yeah. I, like I, I'm actually at the point where it's just I don't even know if that's the right, the right way to describe it, but like, because it's almost I, not almost like a, a, a I, memory, I know, you know even my regular dreams. I know that I'm dreaming and I can control them. So all of them. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, but um, to kind of mention like what he just said is, you you remember it because. I don't know if it's the same for you, but usually there's not much detail in it other than you know you're in your bed, you know what you're looking at, you just can't move your body. You know, like it's it's a very scary thing because I'm assuming that's what it's like when you're, you know, you're actually paralyzed. Mm. Well, and it's weird you know? too because like so sometimes I'll be half a, like it'll be happening to me and I'll probably just open my eyes enough to see whatever like I'm looking like whatever way my face is pointing I'll see that and then I'll immediately start dreaming it so like now I'm thinking that I'm awake and then I realize like maybe a minute a couple seconds later that no I'm still dreaming and this is weird because I'm I can see things I'm right. it's almost like you're like your brain's a or no your body's asleep and you can see things but you just can't fucking move you just can't move that's why it's called paralysis, dude. You know, like that's probably the best way to define it. You yeah, know, I'm just. I mean, it happens to me often. You know, probably a few times a week, maybe two to three times a week. But it's um. See, mine's not that frequent. But I, I'm just. You know, the more I talk about it, the more grateful I am that it's only that small amount of time. You know, a few nights a week. I mean, cause there are people that live with that, that live like that. You know, that are a, paralyzed. I got a crazy story. I mean, there was a. Uh time where I was working a lot and I was trying to focus when I was playing poker tournaments. Yeah. And somebody recommended this new, it's kind of like a drug, I guess, but it's called New Brain or Brainwave by Onnit Labs. Mm -hmm. I tried it, and when I played poker, I was really focused. Is it Alpha Brain? Alpha Brain. That, that's what it was. So I tried that. I uh, had a buddy, Freddy. He tried it, too. He thought it was awesome for poker, really good for focusing. I had the most What, what does it do? It's basically... Dreams, right? Well, basically, it's supposed to be to let you focus more. So, I mean, if I work 40 to Good. 60 hours a week, right. and I go to play a $500 poker tournament, yeah. I want to make sure I'm at 100% focus. Mm. Right. So, we played a couple of poker tournaments. Freddie loved it. I loved it. We reordered. I I'm sorry. I must have missed. I wasn't... 
so what actually is it though that makes you what it i mean i can look up the it's chemicals like a, a neurological stimulant you know yeah. and, is it something that you take it's some, yes, yeah it's, it's a, a pill, pill. It's, it's a, a pill. pill okay that's what i was probably comparable so, to adderall exactly so i mean i took it a few times we went to a few big poker tournaments i really honestly felt that it helped me i was more focused throughout the day i felt like i could just recall different situations quicker right but i had the most insane vivid dreams over and over hmm. again it was absolutely crazy huh i mean i literally would go i can remember the dream right now i would take it for about three or four days on the fourth or fifth day, I would go to sleep. I'd literally be like, wake up in my dream, and I would run into a warehouse complex. I can see the pipes and everything throughout it right now when I'm just talking about it. Mm. And over and over again, I mean, night after night after night after night, there would be my family members, and we were in a gunfight basically. And I had a gun. My family members were behind me, trying to hide with guns, and we were fighting somebody on the other side. And each night, I would wake up after a family member died. Wow! Wow! So I mean, I would go through. You know, I'd be fighting somebody. I'd run around a bridge. I'd run around whatever it is, and I would shoot somebody, and a bullet would come off, and I would see it in slow motion, and it would <laughs> hit my brother. Wow! Or it hit my my mom or Jesus. my dad, and I'm. I mean, I would literally wake up shaking, and you know, Nicole would look at me and just say, "You know, what is going on? What's you know?" I'd literally wake up in a panic, and then yeah. I stopped taking those pills, and I was fine. Never again. I never had it again. Oh, so they have really um, so vivid. Good, I mean, well, they have good benefits to them, but there's a con to it also. I've it's like a been, give and take. I've never been more focused in my life. Like if I was going to do a twenty-hour project, the best thing in the world, hmm. but I would be scared to sleep. Well, wow. you know. I That's always, pretty intense. Maybe this is something relative to that because I always found like if I, if I ever like in my younger years like um, I've done coke, uh, I've you know I, I've done Adderall before. If I take that consecutive like days, for whatever reason, I never sleep well or fully during those days. Right, I'll wake up very easily, very awake, whatever, while I'm taking it. As soon as I stop taking it or stop doing it or whatever. Those next couple days, I fall into really deep sleeps, like really deep sleeps. Maybe I wasn't aware. Maybe that's what is happening, just happening to you. It's basically just a change in your body chemicals. I mean, look at like Roseanne. You know, she took a bunch mm. of Ambien, wakes up at three in the morning, doesn't remember anything, wakes up the next day and her whole career's gone. Her TV show's gone. Dude, Everything was blown up so in her face. That's so crazy. Is I've heard of stories of people that take Ambien and they make, you know, they go and cook like a three to five course dinner. There's a guy that went to the they, supermarket, got dude, a turkey, came home, cooked yeah, it. Yeah, guy goes to the supermarket, got a turkey, came home, cooked it, woke up, dude, and doesn't recall any of it. You know, like that, that, dude. Well, well there was, I'd rather have the, I mean, I've never had either one, but I'd rather have the sleep paralysis than uh, those crazy sleepwalking when you could literally drive while sleeping, cook a turkey, eat the turkey, go to bed, wake up, and now have to clean up What's that sleeping finish? supplement? It starts with an M. Ambien. That's what no, uh, no, that's uh, A. Oh, melatonin. Melatonin, right. <laughs> it starts with an M. Ambien. <laughs> Dude, I, I popped a, a melatonin one night, fell asleep. When I woke up, I wouldn't even realize I was sleepwalking, but I, I, I walked to the, the edge of my stairs, started walking down my stairs, and fell. Huh. And I slid down my stairs, fucked up like my, my ass and back and whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, why would I do something like that? Right. But it was because I took the melatonin and I just wasn't, wow. I wasn't, you know, fully cognitive of, you know, what I was doing. Fucking psychoactive drugs, man. And that's like Literally a natural fun. thing found in like, what, Turkey or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something, yeah. But there's, uh, I mean, there's stories online. Just typing in ambient stories, the first article that comes up is 44 ambient stories that'll creep you out. The very first one is literally feeling like you're on a boat with pirates the other one is what? in gunfights, in in literal like battleship fights that you actually feel dying. I mean, that's, that's so fucked, dude. That and is that's weird. for a drug. drug that's trying to make you sleep. Right. Right. <laughs> and they still sell that to this day. Oh, like crazy. Oh, for right. sure. It's like nuts. You know, I find that. So ta again, taking the conversation a little bit further, you ever been under anesthesia or like mm. had surgery or whatever? Remember. Have not. They put you under. Have you? So you've never been under for I don't anything. Think so. that you guys. I can't remember. No. I That's a strange so. thing because like you don't have any, any recollection control. whatsoever of what just happened. All you remember is, you know, like laying on the table and talking to the doctors. Next thing you know, 
now you're waking up. So it's like it's almost like you died Black, for so like. It's almost like you blacked out and drinking. <laughs> you have no idea what happened in like, those four hours. That was last Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a strange thing. Like yeah. man, that's scary. That there's you know somebody could walk by you and just stick you with a thing and you don't even. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you I was fucking out. Comas for twenty years. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's just lot, fucking too. intense, dude. You know, it makes you ask, like, what is dreaming? What, what is that? Right. Dude, we got to take DMT one time, man. Joe I feel Rogan. like it's... I know, it's so funny because you say that and there's like a running joke of people that listen to Rogan's podcast because he's always talking about DMT. Mike Tyson was on it. I so, saw that yeah, it, it'll be like, you know, somebody will say, hey, Joe Rogan, I just got this sweet new Porsche and he's like, wow, that's really nice. Have you ever tried DMT? <laughs> You know, like, like, like he wasn't always, about everybody. Yeah, he's always talking about it, and it's uh that stuff scares me. I mean, it, it does. That, you know, it sounds scary. Cool. Well, it, it sounds. I mean, it can sound scary based on what you're expecting and and who you're hearing it from. I mean, from everything. Look, I don't know. Can you find just what's a what, at, yeah? Find out right what's a, yeah, like, or look up what's a DMT trip like, because based on how they explain it. It's obviously it's a psychedelic, you know, but it's it's like not comparable to any other drugs. Other than ayahuasca, I believe, which is in like um, maybe the Amazon or in that area, but the kind of experience you get is generally, from what I've heard, all positive, and it's such an outer body experience. You know, like a real makes you rethink taking life your almost. conscience to a higher plane. Not maybe when you come out of it, you rethink life, but while yeah. you're there, it's like a separate thing. To when these people explain how it is, it's almost inexplicable. You know, they can't understand exactly what they saw. It was more like seeing energy and and um, emotions and all these things that we can't see but we know exist, like electricity yeah. and That's scary. love. That's and scary in itself. It, well, it can be. You know, it could also be amazing because <laughs> when they come back, you know, when they come off that trip, I, I haven't looked it up, but I haven't really heard many negative stories to it, neg- negative um well, I mean, experiences. It, it, it's hard to take a drug where somebody says they can see their life. Right. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I don't right. know if I want to fuck with I that. It's like a five minute trip, but it feels like two hours. Well, well inhaling, inhaling says five to ten minutes, but there's also, you know, the edible and whatever else that lasts. So is this one of those things that you, you, you should have somebody. Oh, I'm sure watching. Like you watching can't, you. Like, everybody is, can't do it. Because I heard that that things, like salve or yeah, whatever. You go to Mexico and you sit down with a shaman <laughs> and he hands you whatever. <laughs> look, look up. Like how do you how do you You're take DMT and what's the standard um, experience that people usually get from it? Kind of. Well, that sounds a little scary. Hold on here. I the experience hear is basically everybody says it's like euphoria, right. but also if you have any demons that you're dealing with in your life or any issues, it's going to escalate those to the. And degree. Oh, I so definitely a, don't want to do that. I mean, if you're in a bad place, you're going to either come out of it or have a real good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's probably not too different than people that get super paranoid when they're high. Because I've always felt like it's... When you get paranoid because you're high, it's usually you getting paranoid about actual things that you should probably address when you're not high. You understand what I'm saying? Like, things that... You, during every day to life, you know, whether it's financial, whether it's health related, whether it's, you know, something that you're doing wrong as a parent, you know, whether something isn't going right, you know, it's something that you're not happy with, you know, during the day to day life and everyday operation of things, you can sweep that under the rug. But when you're paranoid, I think when you're high, it kind of brings that to light and almost forces you to say, hey, I got to address this. It's an issue. You know, what well, I can see like there's certain. Um, so like if I'm ever like. If I, if I smoke and I got to run to the, you know, to the convenience store or something like that, I get paranoid of police. Mm. That, that's kind of like a little different than what you're saying. Right. Not necessarily, man, mm. because ultimately what, when you're, I start worrying about like, oh shit, did I just signal? Did I just do this? Did I just do that? Well, that's so ultimately you're, you're just more aware of the consequences and you're, it's bringing to light the fact that you're breaking law, you know, you're driving while being intoxicated. So it's making you more aware of, aware of what you're doing wrong and probably dealing like letting you know hey you should address this maybe not drive when you're high as fuck yeah so, i don't do that <laughs> yeah i don't do that so on second they, uh, thought i don't do that <laughs> there was a study done where they gave a bunch of people dmt and then they tried to record how they're feeling and most of them said they had an out-of-body experience and a lot of them said basically that it was like their consciousness leaving their body so when they came back out of it 
no matter what happened in their life, they have like a renewed consciousness. Basically. See, I'm one of those people that likes my consciousness in my body. <laughs> I, don't you, I don't know if you'd have a good DMT trip. <laughs> so they came, they came back. They were like, like inside where it was. Yeah, like just Sleep stay back. there. Right. Like, they're fine. basically saying that it's like a near death experience. So you have a near death experience. <laughs> I really, love it. That sounds oh, great. You see all of life basically at its core. Before you come out of it, and then once you come out of it, nothing in your life matters because you were so close to a near-death experience. Hmm. You mean none of the problems, like none of yeah, the little things. Like, have I you mean, taken this I don't before? Have milk turns into whatever. <laughs> right, right. It just turns into hey, no big deal. But like, are the yeah. good things okay. get better? That's what I'm curious about. Well, I mean, it just depends. It basically says it's individual based, and then depending on how you feel, basically is right. how you go in. I'm sure. So I feel, feel like awesome. if, I'm sure if, that there's yeah. people that have a bad trip and turn into. Well, God, look it up. Is there? Is there? Uh, what about bad trips? Yeah, there's like 500 research studies on DMT all together. Can we account recount any specific like that screensaver looks like a bad DMT trip? DMT well, what's that? Trip, bad trip. <laughs> <laughs> the but, DMT dictionary. I'm sure like if the bad things skull. don't matter. The good things have got to feel better though. You know. Well, if there's more good than bad, I mean, like people are saying, like, no, you got to, like, you know, this is great. Because when you say an out of body, do it. like a renewed consciousness to where things don't, it's to me, so, I take, hold on, to me, I take that as, you know, you, you come back and you don't sweat the small stuff and you just have a more optimistic, positive view on life and feeling towards life, which I think is ultimately a good thing. You know, if so, more people felt like that, the world would be a better place. So the first guy that they <laughs> tested, they interviewed him after and asked him how he felt. And it came out and he said it was the most indescribable feeling i was literally out of my body i saw myself and then i saw a bunch of craziness <laughs> i thought i died then i started coming down it felt like shrooms then there was uncontrollable laughter and then i was sober awesome experience <laughs> i might have to try that <laughs> yeah so, so dmt next podcast <laughs> so what what fears me what scares me is i think that one of the reasons that i you know like your main two drugs of choice are probably alcohol and pot, right? I think that's probably a pretty common duo for most, you know, people. Not when I'm driving, you know. Yeah, not when we're driving. But I think most of the time, you know, if you ask the average person, right. they smoke pot and they drink. But I feel like to an extent, these are pretty controllable. You know, you can feel yourself getting drunk and decide to stop drinking. Same thing with smoking pot. You know, you can say, all right, I'm as high as I want to be. I'm good. What scares me about this drug is it's like, hey, man, once you take it, yeah, yeah, there, there is no, te- you know, like teetering on to this and then deciding you don't want to anymore. You're, you're on the roller coaster, baby. You're they lock you in. Now. They like, lock you into that roller coaster. There's no turning back. Like, there's no toe dipping. Yeah, the, exactly. The good way to say it. There's no toe dipping. You ain't getting just the tip. You're jumping like, you're in. Fucking this DMT trip right now. Like, there's no the one here for one beer. Like, yeah, you're, you're either a, a you're virgin or your balls. Are you a thirty pack or you're not dipping? Oh shit, man! Well, I don't know, guys. I you know, let's wrap this shit up. It's been going for a little bit. We're a Has little it? nice, yeah. It's, uh, it's been real. I mean, it's getting late. I'm good with it. Oh, the, it's been an hour and a half, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not about the time. It's just you know, we've talked about everything. You know, nice. it's, it's been fun, fucking hey, fun. Joe. We thank you for coming, brother. Thanks I'm for glad you me, came, man. man. Absolutely. And uh, we appreciate obviously you always supporting, listening, and. Tuning in and all that good shit. Of course. Thank you, thank you. All right, bro. I guess that's it. Peace out, everybody. Later. Once again, guys, I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Division Street Auto, AJ Drywall and Plaster, Top Showroom and Gallery, which is also Top Supply, Oneville Tire, and Donkey Dodgers Poker. Thank you all and have a good night.